Hello, my name is Keith Rucker. It's been a pretty busy week for me uh, this past week, mostly traveling on the road uh, with my job. It seems like every year in January, February, March, uh, I stay real busy uh, traveling on the road. It's just uh, the meeting season for my line of work that I do uh, when, in my real job, and uh, as a result, I spend a lot of time away from home uh, during the winter and early spring each year. So uh, this past week, uh, I left last Monday, headed down to New Orleans, spent about three days down there, uh, then left New Orleans, uh, flew to Savannah, Georgia, and uh, spent about three more days in there. So I left last Monday, got home uh, actually on uh, Sunday afternoon. So uh, this past week, as a result, uh, I had zero shop time, which uh, is always causes me to go into some withdrawals. But uh, and uh, since I've been back at home uh, this week, I've mostly been playing catch up, as you can imagine, after being uh, on the road for a week. So uh, I haven't, again, had a lot of time to get in the shop. I did want to shoot one quick video, though. Um, uh, I had a, a question come in uh, from my toolbox tour where I talked about uh, these little spin speed indicators, uh, little tachometers for all intent and purposes. I showed a couple of them that I had in my toolbox. And I gave a brief explanation on how to use them uh, in that video. But I had a, a person say, hey, I want a little bit more information on these. And can you go into a little more detail? I said, yeah, that's a pretty easy thing to do. So uh, I'm going to take a little bit of time right now and, and just shoot a quick video on showing you these uh, uh, speed indicators and go into a little bit more in depth how to use them. So as I showed you in my toolbox tour, I have two different uh, speed indicators. One of them is uh, this brown and sharp uh, speed indicator here. Um, when I, This came in the little wooden toolbox uh, that, this toolbox right back here, that, uh, that I bought about 16, 17 years ago uh, in the auction. And uh, this was in it. Uh, and it actually came with the original instructions. Uh, and looking on the, the bottom of the page down here, looks like a date code. Looks like this was printed in 1943, uh, to give you an idea, uh, approximate probably how old this is. This brown and sharp speed indicator is a model 746. And uh, in addition to that, I have a, a Starrett uh, speed indicator. Uh, I don't remember exactly where I picked this one up at, but somewhere along the way, uh, ended up in my uh, possession and I'm just sitting here looking. I don't see a a number on it. it just says the LS Starrett Company. Uh, no no numbers or anything on it that I see. So, but these are pretty common. Uh, you, I see them from time to time. Uh, if you search on eBay or someplace like that, you'll probably find some hits for uh, for this Starrett type uh, speed indicator. So let me uh, get you guys in a little bit closer and uh, we're going to talk about these a little bit more in depth so you get an idea of how to use them. Maybe you can see these a little bit better now. I'm, I'm going to try to zoom in here. I hope my focus uh, cooperates with me through this. So bear with me as we, uh, as we get through this. But again, I have two different types. I'm going to show you the Starrett one first be, uh, just because it's a little bit easier uh, to get an idea of how it's working. If you look at this Starrett uh, speed indicator, you'll notice that there's a couple things going on here. There's this face on the front, there's a dial that goes around, and hopefully you can see on there there's numbers uh, going around, 1 to 100. Uh, the top row uh, is reading 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, going in this way, whereas the bottom row reads 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 going around the other way. The way this works is as this dial turns an RPM, it moves over and it just goes around like a clock face. So I have, when it gets to that first line, I have moved it 10 revolutions. And uh, if you look across the, the, the top face there, it says 10, uh, which tells me that. And uh, again, depending on which way it's turning, uh, the clock face is going to go one of the two directions. If I go back this way, you can see it's turning back the other way, and you would use uh, the bottom row uh, of numbers uh, to read. So it's fairly simple. What you do is you just go take uh, this indicator, put this little rubber point up into the center hole 
on a shaft or a motor or whatever you're measuring uh, and you time yourself for one minute and uh, you count the number of revolutions. Each time this makes one revolution, it goes past the, the two dots there, past one another, that's 100 revolutions. And then you can read uh, on here, uh, it's, it's down to uh, a single RPM on the gauge. You read on there to get the actual number. So if I put it on there and it made uh, seven trips around, that would be 700 RPMs, and you would read on here and just say 43, it would be 743 RPMs in one minute. And we'll demonstrate this just a minute uh, on a machine. This Brown and Sharp uh, speed indicator works pretty much the same way. Uh, but instead of having a dial that you read on the side, uh, there's just a little detent in this cover. Up underneath this cover, which is just a little metal cover that uh, is flexible, there's a little button. And as this thing passes around, it will go past this detent. And the way you use this one is you just put your, when you're running the, the indicator, you put your hand or your thumb right there over that detent and you just feel for how many times it raises up uh, during the time that you're measuring. And again, for each time that it goes around is a uh, 100 RPMs. Now on this one, uh, in the top up here, I don't know if this is gonna show up on camera or not, uh, but there are two scales. Uh, again, one which turns one way and one which turns the other way. And you have to figure out which way to use. Right now they should be on zero, but as you turn the dial, uh, it's going to turn the whole face in there. And again, you just read the RPMs uh, right off of this dial. So they both basically work the same way, but there are some differences obviously in how they're designed. Uh, but basically both work the same way or on the same principle. Let's uh, go over to a machine and we'll show these in use. All right, I got you over here by my uh, Baldor grinder. Uh, this is a grinder I picked up some time back. Uh, actually did a little horse trading with a friend of mine and picked this one up. Uh, it was in pretty rough shape when I got it, uh, but we, I took it, cleaned it up, uh, replaced the bearings in it. Uh, the motor was in great shape. We repainted it uh, and it's a, it's a sweet little machine now. It's got a five horsepower motor on it. Uh, the wheels on it are uh, 14 inches in diameter and two and a half inches wide on this side. The wheel on the other side is a little bit smaller uh, just because these are expensive wheels. <laughs> and I was able to pick that one up over there uh, pretty cheap somewhere and uh, it had the right size arbor so I just put it on here. So according to the label, uh, this motor on this uh, at, at 60 cycles, which is what I should be running, is should be 1725 uh, RPMs. I will say that uh, I'm in my shop at home and I'm running this on a rotary phase converter, so I may not have exactly, exactly 60 cycles per second, so it could be off one way or the other just a little bit. Um, just like you can use a variable frequency drive to change the frequency, electricity to change the speed. If I'm not running at exactly 60 um, um, cycles over there, my speed on my grinder may be off a little bit one way or the other. Uh, to be honest, I've never tested it, so I don't even know, but uh, we're going to find out. So let's fire this puppy up. All right, I got you zoomed in a little bit closer. Hopefully you can see this. So we're going to take the stared indicator, put it into the end. At about hopefully the same time, I'm going to start my stopwatch here if I'm coordinated to do this. And then we're going to count the revolutions, how many times this goes around. And from there, uh, we can run for one minute and see how we're going. So let's get started in three, two, one, go. Hopefully you can see the stopwatch. That's one, two, three, four, counting the RPMs on here, five are the revolutions of this dial, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 
12, 13, 14, 15, about 10 seconds, 16, 17, All right, so I may have pulled out just a second early there, but this is gonna get us close. So we had 17 uh, RPMs, and uh, let's zoom in here. And if you look on the dial, uh, we're at about 43 or four. So that'd be 1,745 RPMs. Uh, it's supposed to be running at 1,725, so evidently my phase converter is uh, spitting out just a little bit higher frequency rate than 60, but it's pretty darn close. And again, I may have pulled that out about a half a second too soon, so it may have been a little bit more down. We'll just say 1750. The motor's rated at 1725. So that gives you an idea of how to use um, this Sterrett uh, speed indicator. This brown and sharp speed indicator works basically the same way. Uh, you put it in there, and on this one though, you read on the dial here, and every time it makes a 100 RPMs, uh, you feel with your, your hand uh, it passing that detent, and you'll also see it moving out um, as it goes around. Um, you can feel it, or see it actually physically move the uh, indicator in and out. Uh, so this one here you're doing your counting more from feel than by watching it. Again, I like this one because a lot of times when you use uh, one of these speed indicators, uh, you may not be able to see the dial uh, go around like you do with the stare at one. So in this one, if I'm in a tight space, I can just stick this down in there and uh, you can feel it with your thumb and count the, uh, the uh, RPMs uh, just from, from feel. Uh, and then with it, you just, you just read right here on the dial uh, the, the, the RPMs, uh, the individual RPMs, less than 100 off of the, the dial on there. So there you go. That's pretty much how to use a, um, a speed indicator. Uh, again, showing you both the brown and sharp and the Sterrett versions that I personally have. Uh, very handy little tools. Uh, I, I find them to come in handy a lot of times. Um, I do again a lot of stuff with old machinery and a lot of times you're just trying to figure out RPMs on, on a, a piece of machinery uh, and it's great for that. Also very useful in the machine shop uh, if you're trying to figure out the speed uh, that a machine is running for when you're calculating speeds and feeds. Uh, on most lathes and milling machines it will tell you a scale of what it should be but you can actually verify that with one of these speed indicators or if you question whether your speed is actually running accurate, you can double check it with one of these speed indicators. It's a very fairly uh, low tech and uh, somewhat crude uh, instrument, but uh, it works, it's very effective uh, and will get the job done. So that's pretty much all we have for, uh, for this video. Uh, hopefully I'll be back out in the shop uh, this weekend uh, and get a chance to shoot some more video then as we get back to work on restoring uh, the J Vance planer matcher that we've been working on out there. Mm -hmm.